Good morning, Bethel Park family. Uh, in case you haven't had the opportunity to meet her, this is the other member of the Gwaltney family. This is Zoe. She is a Bichon Frise, and she pretty much rules the roost around here. So I wanted to introduce her. I'm going to set her down. For those that were expecting uh, us to be in the chapel, uh, I'm very sad to say that we have had a very significant outbreak of COVID. A significant portion of our church has been affected. So we are not going to have a live service in the sanctuary uh, today. This service is being recorded for Sunday, November the 13th. Uh, this is uh, the Sunday we had planned to honor our veterans. And so I'm going to give a message today honoring veterans and we will physically honor our veterans next Sunday when we can assemble again together. Um, and so for just a moment, for those that, that are listening, uh, if you would like to get a candle and uh, traditionally when we were having to do services this way during the pandemic, we would invite everyone to, to just bring the, the light of Christ into their homes like we do into the churches. So I'm going to light a candle and prepare to begin an abbreviated worship service with you this morning. Uh, I do hope that uh, those of you that are battling COVID, myself included, uh, that you are getting better. Uh, I'm much better than I was a few days ago. This is certainly nothing to play with, and I encourage everyone to be safe. But for now... Uh, if you're if you're listening to us and if you've served in the Air Force, the Army, the Coast Guard, the Navy, the Marines, I give you my thanks and my gratitude as does the Bethel Park family for your service to our country, for your time and for your commitment. And I hope that today's message will be especially meaningful for you. If you would, let's begin uh, by reciting the words of the Apostles' Creed. Uh, I'm going to show it up here for those of you that aren't Methodist in your churches. Don't uh, do this. Uh, this is the text of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and of the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. If you would now join with me in prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day. As we come this morning and we, we honor our veterans, we honor those that have served in the past and those that are serving now. Father, we pray for their safety. We pray for those that are serving in dangerous areas in this world. Father, we pray for the missionaries that are doing likewise, going out at great risks to themselves in some of the most dangerous places on earth. Father, we ask that you be with them. We ask that you guide them, lead them, and help them to succeed in their missions. Father, we pray for this country. Um, we've had another election, and we see that we are just as bitterly divided as we have been and as long as I can remember. Father, we ask for peace in this nation, peace in this world. We ask for an end to the pointless wars that continue, especially lift up those people in the Ukraine and in the Middle East, uh, in certain areas in Africa. Father, let this foolishness of mankind come to an end. Father, help us as we go through the day is to use the gifts and the talents that you've given to us. Help us to develop those talents and use them in ways that are pleasing in your sight, in ways that improve this world, 
in ways that help the poor, the needy, in ways that show Christ's love through all of the things that we think, say, and do. Father, we have so many things to be thankful for being born in this country. Let us never take it for granted, as once again, we are sitting outside of our sanctuary because it's not safe to go there. But we know in many places in this world, it would not be safe to go and assemble in a church building. And Father, we do recognize that we are the church and the building is just a meeting place. But it is still a place of comfort. It is still a place we consider home. And we pray that we can be there together again next week. Father, most of all, we thank you for sending Jesus into this world and for the tremendous sacrifice he made on our behalf. And now we say the prayer that he taught his disciples to say, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading for the day is going to come from the book of Matthew. It's Matthew 8, verses 5 through 13. And I'll give you a second to, to find that since I didn't announce it ahead of time. It's Matthew 8, verses 5 through 13. And this morning I'm reading from the NIV translation. So it says, When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority and soldiers under me. I tell this one, go and he goes, and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this. And he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished. And he said to those following him, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of, the king, of this kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, it will be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed that very hour. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. I want to share with you that several years ago, like 11 years ago, I was asked on just a few hours notice if I could come to a distant church and deliver a Veterans Day message. Uh, I don't remember the exact details, but something had happened um, in the family, uh, in the life of a pastor that was serving there. And this is many years, this is like five or six years before I started the process to become a pastor. So I didn't have a lot of materials, so I did like a lot of us would have done. I mean, I had my, my life application Bible, but I didn't have a collection of commentaries, and I didn't know a lot of verses off the top of my head to tie directly into Veterans Day and to bring a message. So I did what a lot of us would do, and I um, consulted the doctor, Dr. Google, that is, and, and I did some research, and one thing that I come across I thought was very powerful. I came across a, uh, an article or message from a pastor named Reggie Braziel. He is from Christian Hope Church of Christ in Plymouth, North Carolina. Uh, I actually have some family in Plymouth, North Carolina. That might have been part of the reason the article caught my attention. But anyway, I'm going to share with you uh, a lot of, of what he said that day. Um, for now, World War I ended on November the 11th, 1918. 
And after the war, Congress declared November the 11th as an annual holiday. The holiday was originally called Armistice Day, but the name was changed to Veterans Day following World War II. And on that day, we pay tribute to all veterans, both living and dead, who fought so bravely to provide and to protect our freedoms as a country. And some may ask, why are veterans so deserving of our honor? And friends, there are many reasons for this. One reason is because of the causes to which a veteran is committed. A veteran is committed to the cause of freedom. A veteran is committed to the cause of courage. A veteran is committed to love of country. And friends, long, long after the veteran has laid aside his military uniform, they remain some of the most patriotic, the most loyal, the most committed Americans that we have in our country. And for that commitment to a cause that's greater than themselves, they are truly deserving of our honor. Another reason our veterans are so deserving of our honor is because of the cost that veterans are willing to pay. The veteran gave up safety and security of their homes to go and serve. They left behind family and friends. Some surrendered or postponed their personal plans for education or for a career. Some lost sight. Some forfeited arms and legs to prosthetics. Some had their faces permanently scarred or grossly disfigured. Many, far, far too many, sacrificed their lives. And many others are still haunted by the nightmarish images of war that are going to haunt them for the rest of their lives. And for those great costs that our veterans have paid, they are truly deserving of our honor and of our respect. In today's scripture reading, Jesus pays tribute. He pays honor to a military veteran, not because of his service to his country, but because of his faith in God. The two key points I want us to focus on today as we look at this text. The first thing I want us to notice is that the military veteran gives honor to Jesus. When the scripture tells us Jesus had entered Capernaum and a centurion came asking for help. The centurion says he has a servant that's lying paralyzed and in terrible pain. And Jesus tells him right away, I will go and heal him. But the centurion said, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come up under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. A centurion was a military leader in the Roman army. And the Greek word for centurion that Matthew uses, and, and for, if you know Greek, forgive my pronunciation, but the word is ekatenarchos. Ekatenarchos. That means literally commander of 100. And while a centurion may have commanded 100, it wouldn't have been uncommon for a Roman centurion to have been in charge of far more than 100 personnel. In the next verse, the centurion told Jesus about the kind of authority that he has as a Roman officer. He says, I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me, I tell this one, go, and he goes. I tell this one, come, and he comes. I tell my servant, do this, and he does it. Something that I didn't know, something that I found in, in uh, Pastor Brazil's notes, is that every time that a centurion is mentioned in the New Testament, it's always, he is always mentioned in a very favorable light did not realize this. When Jesus died on the cross, it was a centurion who said, truly, this man is the Son of God. In Acts 10, 
The first Gentile convert mentioned by name is the centurion Cornelius. In Acts 21, we read where some soldiers, including centurions, were the ones who rescued Paul from being killed by an angry mob inside the city of Jerusalem. In Acts 23, we read that it was some centurions along with a band of more than 200 soldiers who provided Paul with a military escort to Caesarea, where he was brought before Felix the governor. And again, in Acts 27, Paul and a group of prisoners were being taken to Rome and they were shipwrecked off the Isle of Malta. The soldiers that were escorting the prisoners wanted to kill them all to keep them from escaping. But a centurion aboard the ship convinced them not to do that, primarily because he wanted to spare Paul's life. In our scripture reading today, we meet another centurion who again is painted in a favorable light. We learn that this centurion has come to Jesus because he has a servant that has some form of, some form of paralysis and is apparently in a lot of pain. The Greek word that Matthew uses for servant in verse 6 is generally is translated as boy or as one who is loved like a son. So this isn't just any old servant. This is somebody the this, this, this centurion deeply cares about. So Jesus seeing the love and the compassion that this rugged military veteran has for his suffering servant immediately says, okay, I will come and heal him. But then notice, notice the great honor that this military veteran gives to Jesus in verse 8. He says, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. But only speak a word, and I know my servant will be healed. Friends, by faith, the centurion had come to Jesus. He could have commanded that his soldiers bring Jesus to him, but he didn't do that. He sought Jesus out. By faith, the centurion humbly honored Jesus as the superior authority between the two of them. And by faith, this military veteran recognized his unworth unworthiness to have the sinless Christ come into his home. Friends, the military veteran gave honor to Christ Jesus. And next we see that Jesus gives honor to the military veteran. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished. And he said to those following, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their place at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside in the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then Jesus said to the centurion, go and it will be done just as you believed it would be. And his servant was healed at that very hour. In these verses, we see Jesus do two things in regard to the military veteran. First of all, in verse 10, Jesus honored him for his faith. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and he said to those that followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in all of Israel. And friends, depending on the translation that you read, there are only two times in all of the New Testament where we are told that Jesus marveled, or some translations say was astonished at something, only twice in all of the New Testament. In Mark 6.6, 6, Jesus marveled or was astonished at the unbelief of the Jewish people at his hometown in Nazareth, just before they get ready to try to throw him off a cliff, no less. 
And here in Matthew 7.10, <coughs> Jesus marveled, was astonished at the faith of the centurion. In fact, Jesus hadn't seen faith like that in all of Israel. He had performed miracles in their towns and villages. He had taught in their synagogues. And yet many of the Jewish people still rejected Jesus. But it was this Gentile military veteran, this Roman centurion, who demonstrated uncommon faith in Jesus. So much so that Jesus marveled at the level of his faith. My friends, from this we can take that true faith honors Jesus. And Jesus honors true faith. The centurion, the centurion said to Christ, Just speak a word, and my servant will be healed. And if not, I'll sick my dog on you. Sorry, she just doesn't get it. Just speak a word, brothers and sisters. Here's a picture of what true faith is about. True faith is taking Christ at his word. How many times do we fail to simply take Christ at his word? Jesus says, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. And yet sometimes we still don't ask, seek, or knock in prayer as we should. Jesus says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be thrown into the sea, and it will be thrown into the sea. Yet oftentimes we struggle with doubt and with lack of faith, with fear. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. And yet many of us worry ourselves sick over some of the silliest, most meaningless things that we can imagine. Look at the incredible faith of this military veteran. He told Jesus, just speak a word and my servant will be healed. Just say the word and he'll be healed. See, Jesus did not only honor this veteran for his faith Jesus healed his suffering servant and then Jesus said to the centurion go your way as you have believed so it will be done for you as you have believed so it will be done for you and his servant was healed in that very hour Jesus is telling the centurion, because you believe I have authority from my heavenly Father, and because you trusted that I can simply speak a word and your servant can be healed, so now let it be done for you. Amen. And the centurion's servant was healed in that very hour. Dearly beloved, True faith sees the invisible. True faith believes in the impossible. And true faith receives the incredible. I'm going to close now. My voice is long gone. But I want to close with some closing thoughts from Pastor Braziel. He said, it is the veteran not the preacher who gives us freedom of religion. It is the veteran and not the reporter who gives us freedom of the press. It is the veteran, not the poet, that gives us freedom of speech. It is the veteran and not the lawyer who gives us the right to a fair trial. And it is the veteran and not the politician 
that gives us the right to vote. It is the veteran who salutes the flag, who served under the flag, and who gives us the freedom to proudly wave our own flags. My friends, today we honor our veterans as they are deserving of our honor, but we worship Jesus Christ who is our Commander-in-Chief. I want to thank everyone for being here under these unusual circumstances. Um, hopefully we can be together again next week in our beautiful cemetery at Bethel Park. And on that day, we will honor the veterans of um, our congregation. We will salute them and have them stand as part of our service. Until that time, I ask that all of you be safe. This, uh, this latest form of the vaccine went right through our church, vaccinated or unvaccinated. So be careful while you're out. Do all that you can to keep you and your family safe. And for now, uh, and, and do please keep my congregation, so many of us with COVID, in your thoughts and in your prayers. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his face towards you and give you peace, both now and forever. My friends, take care until we meet again. Amen.